Hey there, this is Christy. Welcome to my channel and thanks for watching. And um, today, today's reading is going to be an art reading and it'll be for the month of March 2019. And these are some of my brushes. Uh, I do like to use the Chinese brushes. That's these three here. I'll probably be using the, like the middle ones. Um, people are asking about my brushes. So this one's a great big Kolinsky sable, the big one. Um, I may be using that for a wash. And this is a liner brush rigger that I use for, for lines. Um, all right, so what I've really been directed to do today is to, um, to the fish. Uh, it's Pisces season, and um, I'm going to go ahead and be, oh, let's just change this and see if we can get the, well, the lighting is just really tough here. <laughs> there. Um, the fish. So like, yeah, we just entered Pisces season. We are going into a new moon in, um, in Pisces. That'll be on March 6th. And just Pisces energy, it feels like it's really strong. And I keep getting this, um, I don't know, this just kind of direction to explore the Pisces archetype because um, I was actually, this was all just kind of running through my head, you know, in dream, a semi deep dream state this early this morning. And it was almost like the reading was, was happening at that point. Um, except that I was sort of half asleep. <laughs> and then when I woke up, um, my dog was whining to go out. So <laughs> I did not write it down. So I've kind of forgotten what came through. But I'm feeling like if I just kind of do this and, and do this art reading here, um, it'll, it'll come back around. Because there was a lot that came through and um, it felt like it was significant, significant for this time. This is a uh, koi, and um, I just, like, it's just a fish. <laughs> koi fish is a um, decorative fish that's kind of a Japanese, so turn around, I've been using a reference photo here, so um, I'll just kind of see if I can't. mess with this and turn it around. Oh, whatever. I think I'll just hunt. I was going to turn the reference photo around and, and draw from that, but I think Spurs just told me just, just do it. Trust yourself. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just got to trust that what we, you know, that we've, we've got a channel and we can just trust, trust the guidance to, to bring things through. Um, all right, so this is going to be just sort of a quick painting. I'm not going for ultra realism or anything like that. I'm really going more for the energy involved. And, you know, um, everybody's an artist in some way. It's not all visual, right? This is, this, is, um, this is masking fluid. I'm going to throw a little bit of this in there. Um, and what this does is it, it's like a resist. And if I can get it to go, I think it's been sitting around for a while. You know, this, this is um, kind of bringing up some stuff here. Sometimes things just come up that, that they're not what we intended. When our intentions get blocked, there we go. We can either get upset with it or we can quit, or we can just kind of very calmly see if we can unplug whatever's being plugged. So this is a particular type of masking fluid that I've kind of caught onto recently, that when it's working, I really like because it doesn't require you to dunk up your brushes. Masking fluid's pretty sticky stuff, and it can really get in those brushes and you like never use a good brush for masking fluid because it will you would regret it. You'll never <laughs> a brush will never be the same again. Um, so 
the last reading I did was for this first week in March. And really there was a lot of emphasis on slowing down. That's what this fluid is asking me to do right now. It just says, kind of just slow down. Don't be in such a rush. If things don't go as fast as you would like, it's all right, you know, it's all right. So we have a choice if things are just being blocked, we can keep at it. Sometimes it's good to take another direction. So at this point, I'm kind of feeling like, let's forget the masking fluid. Let's just go direct. And um, I do have a different type of masking fluid. I could black brush it on, but I'm feeling like, well, let's just, let's just go. Let's just go with the paint. Um, okay, normally you want the masking fluid to dry before you go on with paint. I think there's little enough on there and it's so thin. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this wet. So we're gonna wet down the fish. Nice thing in what this is, um, I haven't taped down this paper at all. So we're just going very, very, very loose, very relaxed, very kind of almost cowboy style. Just get it down there. Normally, um, it's a good thing to tape the paper down, stretch it. Um, I'm being just very cavalier about this right now. That's all right. Okay. So, um, I'm getting here, let's get some yellow in here. And this is called wet into wet technique where paper's wet and you're just dropping wet paint right into the middle. Um, and what it does is it just, it, through capillary action, it, it just, the, the water just takes it. And you can get these beautiful blossomy looking, you know, just, just really watery effects like this. Um, What's calling to me is this kind of circle and really the yellow just really wants to come through like the sun. Um, I'm just getting a real kind of solar plexus feel for this. Um, I'm letting this just kind of bloom. And there's, you know, this is, this is joyful. This is some joyful stuff. Life doesn't have to be. <laughs> so much of a grind all the time you know it like we're, we're a lot of us here are, are clearing a lot of stuff and it's been an intense couple of years for a lot of us intense like lots and lots of clearing lots of purging lots of purification going on um and it will probably continue to be that for a while, but there's a lot of joy too, and I think a lot of joy surfaced thing that this year. If you've been doing the work this year, if you've been doing the work, and th by that I mean, you know, just paying attention to spirit, being disciplined about it, about you know, because um, ascension. And waking up, it requires a lot of discipline. I mean, yes, it's love and light, but uh, love and light, you know, it, it's easier to just sink into the morass, right? If we're going to stay afloat, we've got to keep moving, be aware of kind of what's up and what's down, and keep our ourselves upright, keep ourselves flowing through the water. Sometimes, sometimes when we're in the flow, the river, the current can be strong. And we got to be very aware of how we're moving through it, because it can take you in and whack you if you're not totally in balance. So Pisces does have a lot to do with keeping that balance. You know, it's that yin and yang kind of thing, big time. I'm feeling that coming up just in the ethers right now. Um, I think, you know, for a big portion of us, for certain 
certain parts of humanity were really hitting that point of, of balance, that masculine feminine balance that is so necessary um, you know, to keep and, and heal being in harmony. The masculine feminine elements is really key. And that solar plexus, right? This is all about solar plexus. Strengthening your will. It's, I don't know that it's a coincidence that, you know, joy, the color yellow is, is associated with joy. It is a real joy color. It's also, at least in the 3D conventional um, depiction of the chakras, it's associated with the solar plexus. Um, gold also the crown chakra, right? So we've got both, you know, but to, to get to that crown opening, a lot of times you gotta work that solar plexus because you gotta pull yourself up out of the dark, out of the mud, out of the muck, at the bottom. It takes an act of will sometimes. All right, there's some beautiful, just golden sunlight coming through here. Let's look at the fish. If you're wondering what the music is in the background, it's, uh, it's from the New Earth Channel. It's a sheep people, um, South American, ayahuasca, um, Icaros, the medicine songs. And I've never done ayahuasca, I'm not really inclined to at this time. But I'm finding that it's very healing just to listen to the music, the songs. This fish is wanting some of the green to come in. It's the green healing color of the earth. Watch how the water just carries. So in watercolor, you don't have to, a lot of people struggle with watercolor because they're used to having to control and direct everything. And with watercolor, I love this medium because it's this partnership between you and the paint. And so not even you and the paint, you know, you and the paint and the water, uh, all of it, it's got to work in partnership. And it takes a certain kind of sensitivity to allowing the water to do it, right? Allowing the water to, you know, trusting that the water carry the paint for you so like even just touching down just a little bit and you can see I just touched the paint there you know the, the, the tip of the brush and look how it goes right so it's like I don't have to be constantly making effort and effort and effort to to um, you know move the paint along here um, just little light touches like little butterfly touches and that's all it takes Sometimes, sometimes we try so hard and we just kind of muddy up the waters. What about the other one? 
Google finish with this. Let's go for something a little on the red spectrum, eh? Red or purple? Give me a little orange. Uh, there was something that Pisces was telling me, and I can't quite remember how it came about because it had something to do. Oh, um, it was it was really about um, first of all, it it has to do with connection. Um, because Pisces isn't just the fish, it's two fish, right? The symbol of Pisces is two fish swimming, right? Um, so it's, it's going beyond the individual and into that connection. And Pisces was really telling me very strongly this morning that the connections now are more and more important. And I keep getting this phrase over the past couple of years, when light workers get together, magic happens. So like the, the encouragement is to really pay attention to those connections. And things are really opening up right now for partnerships of all sorts between light workers, between people who you know, are in that awakening process um things are opening up for us to meet each other to get together and and the the encouragement is to you know be open to that and look for opportunities to work together to come together to pray together to um you know it's it's very important right now because Lightworkers have been in isolation for millennia. And that's what there's, you know, there's not a love and light out there. And I'm not saying this to be alarmist at all. But there, there are forces out there that really don't like it. <laughs> um, you know, when things start getting good. There are forces out there that are trying to keep us apart, trying to kind of push us back down to the muck, trying to make life miserable. Like, you know, stay, like, make life stay miserable the way it's been. Um, I'm not saying that life has been totally miserable. I'm not saying that at all, but it's like, if you're familiar with the idea of the 3D, you know, earth versus the 5D earth, um, there's forces out there that really want to keep us in 3D. And that has a lot to do. Um, isolation is a great big tool that's used by that. Um, because the more, the more we come together, the stronger we are. Um, I forget what the term is, but when you look at like, not, not so much, yes, you know, it's a little bit the quiet, but even more so like the little tiny fish in the ocean, um, they school together. And when they school together, they kind of have the effect of being a great big fish, even though they're all little ones, but they move together like one. And it's very protective for them um, to, to, to operate like that. And, and that's what, that's what's starting to happen. You know, I'm seeing, well, you know, whether it's twin flames coming together or just soulmates coming together, or groups of lightworkers coming together, working together, it's a beautiful thing. So like, you know, if, if you're kind of getting, feeling like you want to just hole up and be by yourself, yeah, sometimes that's good. We do need to spend time going within and, and getting to know ourselves and, and stuff, but it's also really important if you, if you 
I guess what I'm saying is be on the lookout or be aware of when you feel you'll come across certain people that you feel like you just know. You just know that you're meant to be connected or there's something about their energy that just calls to you. Pay attention to that. Because these are the these are the people, that's your soul tribe. When you get together with them and open stargates, it really opens up some amazing stuff to happen. Really amazing. Right? Okay. So I'm going to move to some smaller things. And the other thing that's connected with that, that I'm getting, let me talk a little bit about the water first again, because um, the water is such a powerful force. And right now the earth, the earth herself is changing. The earth herself is going through this transformation. Like there's a lot of planetary stuff happening energetically. And some of this weird weather, whatever, you know, that's it's connected with that. So we're going to see, you know, we might see some kind of very powerful things happening with the earth and the water and the earth. Let's just kind of get some scans in here. Um, you know, and when that happens, it, it, it can really kind of... <laughs> Can shake things up pretty well. So I just like if you've been following me, you may have heard this phrase shake up a lot lately. And I keep getting that. It's like it, you know, but it's nothing, it's not to be afraid of. I just want to stress that because you know, this is just natural. Um, but shakeups can be like a little <laughs> scary to, to navigate. Um, so the more we can kind of work together and work in community, the easier it is to navigate a shakeup. I'll give you an example. Um, this past weekend, I did my very first retreat, which was awesome. It was just a couple of soul sisters and me. Um, we went to the cabin, went out, um, kind of this wilderness retreat. It's a group journey, which was pretty cool. But we each went on a vision quest the second day. Um, it was beautiful, but the day that uh, it was Sunday, it was actually my birthday. Um, the last day, it had snowed overnight, and, and it was still snowing. It was snowing like gangbusters. It was the biggest snowstorm I think we've had in years. And that's saying a lot, because I live in the UP of Michigan, so we had a lot of snow. Um, but this was huge. And so we woke up and there's like a foot of snow on the ground and <laughs> we had to pack out of there. So it just happened there was another cabin of women in the cabin next to us. We all ended up getting ready to leave at the same time. And we had four vehicles. There were three kind of truck, um, big four-wheel drive vehicles, and then my little Subaru, which is also four-wheel drive, but it's low. <laughs> um, and so there we were, and we're looking at it, and we're looking at the, this, this, you know, you had to hike in the cabins, but the cars were on this parking lot, and there was this like 200 yard driveway to the road, and the road was covered with snow. So there was a lot of stuff, but the driveway was really <laughs> full of snow. And we were all looking at this and we're like, well, we have a chance if we can get to the road, but the driveway. So it's like, okay, let's start shoveling. Um, I mean, this is a long driveway, but there were, there were seven or eight of us. And we had shovels and one of the women was like, oh, maybe if we take our snowshoes and, and you know, pack it down, it'll help too. <laughs> so some of us were shoveling like crazy and others of us were on snowshoes, just kind of trying to pack down the best we could. We were shoveling, not trying to shovel the whole driveway, but shoveling the ruts um, to let the cars out. 
and we managed to get out three of the vehicles um, which were able to make it out to the road. It was maybe a couple miles out to the road, the main road. Um, and, but then there was my little Subaru, <laughs> kind of way stuck. So the last one in there, he got the Subaru turned around. And one of the women from the other cabin, and we didn't know these people, right? They were, they were all from, from the area, but never met before. Strangers, right? So this was really awesome because we were all strangers, but we were all just working together, laughing, joking. It was hard work. It was shoveling. A lot of times you like me, you look at a big shoveling job, it's like, oh my God. But it was just, it was like a party. And um, it, actually the work went very quickly. But anyway, one of them had a husband and it was great. He was like the the youper dude that you need in a pinch. Um, big Finnish guy, bluest eyes I've ever seen. And uh, he came in with this great big pickup and a towing strap. And <laughs> so we ended up actually, because he, he got, that, his truck even got stuck. And we had to help him um, get his truck out, you know, just trying to turn around to get back up into the driveway. But we did that, and uh, we hooked up Subaru to his big old truck. And it was the wildest ride of my life, towing behind that big truck in my Subaru. I had to steer like crazy. The thing was fishtailing. <laughs> There's our fish again. It was epic. Epic. It was great. It's best birthday ever. <laughs> And when we came out of there, it come shooting out of the side road. Um, everybody was cheering. <laughs> but the whole thing was, you know, it was coming together and working together because none of us by ourselves would have, you know, gotten out of there. We had to rely on help of strangers freely given you know and I, I said I said to this guy his wife I said you know I, I, I'd love to do something for you can we bake you cookies can we whatever and you know can we pay it forward and they're like oh no 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 I'm like really you know I'd, I'd really like to do something um, and she's like oh well we're mountain bikers maybe you could like if you want to pay it forward the donation to the trails so, but again that's a community thing the trails belong to everybody so Pisces is really coming and saying right now you know really we need to really work together start bringing each other together working together sharing resources um, because we have so much in this world. This world is so abundant, so abundant. There is so much abundance and wealth available mm -hmm. to everybody, like collectively, to the collective. That there's no reason anybody should be lacking. No reason at all. But we gotta jumpstart that because it's not gonna happen on its own. So it's like if we start just in our little communities, start doing things, little things to come together. Um, one of the things I'm really being shown is that um, self-sufficiency is, is a big theme that I'm seeing coming up. It just seems like everybody I know, a lot of people, the people awakened people that I know are starting to be like, oh, I want to do a garden. Even people that just weren't into gardening in the past. It's sort of coming up and I've been getting very strongly these messages like think about self-sufficiency but and I'm not I'm not talking about preparing for Armageddon right and I want to be very clear about that. Like this is not a call for like panic at all. 
but it's a call for let's 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 think about contingencies, right? Um, and I'm not thinking that the world's coming to the end at all, at all. I'm not thinking we're going to have like a total societal collapse at all. Um, but one of the things that's going to prevent that is preparedness. Um, you know, the more prepared we all are and together as a society and collectively, the less chance there is of some sort of big societal collapse. So I'd say like, don't be expecting a collapse, but do expect a shakeup. And one of the things we can do to just smoothly transition through any kind of shakeup is, is um, you know, that self-sufficiency aspect of it. But I'm really getting self-sufficiency, not necessarily so much as individuals or individual families, but as small communities, as communities. Um, and so this is a, an encouragement to think about, you know, Think about community and thinking about ways that we can come together, share share resources. Listening to this tribal music, it's like, you know, we're all, we're all a big tribe. And that's what that means to be a tribe is to, you know, that, I don't, I'm not saying that we have to be communist or anything. <laughs> I'm not saying that either, but, but just to really revisit it because we've come out of a long period of time where it's been this ideal of the uh, rugged individualist, you know, the guy who can do it all and has everything he needs and he's a self-contained unit. Um, but it's time to get past that because we're all interdependent. That's what Pisces is saying. There's interdependence. And that's a beautiful thing. All of nature is interdependent. All of nature. is playing on this little fish. I'm going to talk watercolor, and I, I probably will again. One of the big things, hardest things to get people to do sometimes, if they've been painting before, I, I find that with beginners it's much easier. But to get... <laughs> People to learn to just play and, and not worry about the outcome. It's like, you know what? There's a painting in there, whatever, you know? Just have fun with it. Playing with the paint. Having play to happen. And, and, and being a little daring. It's like, oh my God, there's a color there, holy cow. It's a strong color. <laughs> it's scary to put down, but hey. Oh. Think about the arts as it gets you out of your thinking mind and starts really activating that intuitive part of you. Like, you know, something's directing me towards the colors that I'm choosing. There. Okay. Well, let's look at this other little fishy here. Let's see what I do. So yeah, self-sufficiency, but self-sufficiency in an interdependent way. Well, what, we, what can we share? What resources can we share? 
that will benefit everybody. Community gardens are And the other thing I'm getting out of this that's come forward again, it came forward at the retreat in a different way, um, is a sense of birthing. If you look at this, it's almost like a, a cervix opening or something. Um, you know, that sense of the circle expanding. Um, birthing and purging have a lot in common. So there has been so much purging. You know, and it's painful. But birthing, I mean, purging is good and necessary. Birthing has a whole new feel to it. And it, it's really feeling to me like some of this, you know, purging feeling that's coming forward, it's feeling more like birthing to me. You know, not just getting rid of um, you know, dark stuff, but actively starting to create something beautiful, something new. There's a lot of new beginnings, energy coming forward that I didn't necessarily feel last year so much. Um, last year was a lot of purging. Um, this is like if you, anybody, like if you've never had a natural birth, those moms out there, if you've had a natural birth, um, <laughs> you may remember <laughs> there are times where it, it feels like, I mean, you may be thrown up, you may be feeling like you need to poop or something, right? When it comes real close to that birth, birthing time and I, you know, no apologies. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I'm not going to apologize if I'm grossing you out because this is, this is real life. Right. Um, real life is bloody and messy and ugly sometimes. Not ugly. I mean, birthing is beautiful, but you know, it's a mess. It's a freaking mess, but it's a beautiful process. And we're all going through a beautiful process collectively right now. So let's just kind of maybe acknowledge that that yes, it's hard and yes, there's some mess and blood even and, and stuff that maybe isn't the prettiest thing to look at. <laughs> um, but we're collectively birthing something amazing and beautiful. And if we can realize that's what's happening, it becomes a celebration rather than it, it becomes a celebration rather than um, you know just a, an ordeal I mean, look at these guys. They look like a, <laughs> I don't know, a Mexican piñata or something. Festive. They've got things to celebrate. There's a lot to celebrate. So I would love to hear your celebrations. <laughs> you can put in your comment, what, what has come up for you lately to celebrate? And remember that this is like, this is intended to be, <laughs> originally intended to be a reading for March. Um, but what I'm kind of feeling like, it's, it's like, this is a portal right now that we're in. A real portal opening up. Like, this is like, welcome to 5D right here, right now. 
Welcome to 5D. The door is opening right here. This is a portal. This period of time for a lot of us, if you've been doing the work, you're going to see things opening and starting now. This past couple months was, you know, sometime in March, really, things are going to be flying open. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at feeling like the spring is going to be maybe kind of a whirlwind for a lot of us in a good way. A good way. I don't know why I'm using such a small brush. I like to use bigger brushes. You know, get bigger. Think bigger. Restrict yourself. It's okay to say yes. allowed to say yes to good things. <laughs> right. So that's what Pisces wants to say. Getting right into Pisces season here. Right. Well, hope you've enjoyed. And let's see if I can hold this up a little bit. It's actually going to be turned around a little bit, but the way the way I painted it, I'm going to turn around so you can see it. It's more like that. See if I can move this light around, see if it makes it look better or worse. It's probably worse. Um, I did order some better equipment for turn this off for, me. for um, photography. Uh, a lot of it's calm. I need an adapter. I just didn't realize I had to order that for my get my cell phone up there. And um, so I'm kind of hoping to get better visuals sometime soon. If I put a little bit of uh, There, that maybe shows it. Uh, it's a little too dark, but anyhow, I'll um, stick it up on the um, the thumbnail at the, the the whatever the title thing, and you can see it there. So, um, if you guys are interested in the painting, just let me know. Shoot me a little um, shoot me a little message because uh, I can have this available as a print. Um, I might put an, on eBay if a few people are interested. Um, it's, you know, just, just it wasn't meant to be a huge piece of fine art. So I may just throw this up on eBay and uh, see what happens with that. 
And thank you again for watching. Love you all. Would love your comments. Um, if you have, as usual, if you have anything to add, if you've had downloads or anything that, you know, Spirit is speaking to you as you watch this painting happening, totally, totally put it in the comments because, um, you know, like I said, this is a collective thing that's happening now. Lightworkers are coming together. The more we can share, share our experience, you know, share our downloads, share what's coming through for us. Um, it's really going to pick up the healing in general, like, you know, for us as individuals, for us as, um, you know, communities and for the planet as a whole. So definitely, you know, share your downloads. I would love to hear that. Um, like, subscribe, you know, that good bit. And um, again, thanks for watching. And I will catch you again soon.